good morning students i am dr seshadri and today we are going to discuss about uh, agricultural poison before discussing about the topic we will see few facts about poisoning in previous class we have read about what is a poison the qualities of a homicidal and suicidal poison classification of it the medical legal and law related to poison diagnosis of a poison in a, in a living and dead patient what are all the samples to be collected what will be the post mortem findings the treatment of it and most important the duties of a medical practitioner in case of a suspected poisoning if you haven't watched the introduction to toxicology video please go to the watch list of the channel where you can find the first session okay now coming to the topic as per who statistics 3 million acute poisoning cases with 2.2 lakhs death occur annually out of which 90% death occur in developing countries and most of them are seen in agricultural workers when you are practicing as a doctor you will definitely face agricultural poisoning cases in your hospital so pay attention and listen the video carefully there are more than 1000 chemicals which are currently used as insecticide and pesticides they can be broadly classified based on their toxicity and source of origin there are four categories of chemicals which are classified based on their toxicity they are virtually harmless comparatively harmless mildly toxic and highly toxic virtually harmless chemicals include phenoxyacetic acid plant hormones like mcpa dcpa and tcpa copper oxides oxychlorides lime sulfur wash petroleum wash and tar oil emulsion the comparatively harmless chemicals include 20% sulfuric acid and sodium chlorate they are used most commonly as mass herbicide for road and rail tracks mildly toxic chemicals include chlorinated hydrocarbons like ddt methachlor chlordin aldrin and dieldrin they are used to control fly louse tick as agricultural insecticide and cattle sorry cattle disinfectors highly toxic chemicals include arsenic compounds like sodium arsenite lead and calcium arsenite paraffin nicotine sulfates tannates hydrocyanic acid dinitro compounds and organophosphates there is another set of classification based on their origin they may be of vegetable origin like nicotine pyrethrin and rotenone or chemical insecticides like phosphorus compounds of antimony arsenic barium mercury thallium zinc and fluorides or synthetic organic chemicals like phosphate esters carbamates chlorinated hydrocarbons now coming to the commonest agricultural poison that is organophosphorus poisoning they are further divided into alkyl and aryl phosphates the alkyl phosphates include hetp tepp ompa malathion demeton and trichlorophon the aryl phosphates includes parathion parooxon methylparathion chlorthion and diazinon they are available as dust granules and liquids now coming to the absorption how will they ab get absorbed in human beings these dust can get directly into the body by inhalation or by skin contact the liquids are absorbed by ingestion when sprayed in air the absorption in plants occur through leaves and stems they are metabolized in liver and detoxification occurs in cytochrome p450 monoxygenase the aryl organophosphates require liver activation to become toxic the excretion of these metabolites occur in urine these organophosphorus compounds are commonly mixed with a solvent called aromax which produces the kerosene smell that's why organophosphorus patients are having a kerosene like smell in their body cavities sometimes they may also be mixed with the other chemical solvents which are odorless now let's get into the mechanism of action in a normal person acetylcholine is produced at the myoneural junction they act as chemical transmitters at the synapse and binds to the acetylcholine receptor which causes muscular contraction they are hydrolyzed to choline and acetic acid spontaneously this hydrolysis is mainly increased by acetylcholine esterase which is present in the plasma on membranes or in the cytoplasm this effect is depicted in the first and second picture in case of organophosphorus poisoning the organophosphorus compounds are powerful inhibitors of cholinesterase enzyme which are present in all parts of the body 
the trocholinesterase are found in RBC, nervous tissue and skeletal muscle and pseudocholinesterase are found in plasma, liver, heart, pancreas and brain. As a result, acetylcholine accumulates at the parasympathetic, sympathetic and somatic sites which leads to syndrome of overactivity due to unhydrolyzed acetylcholine. Therefore, there is continuous stimulation of local receptors and paralysis. The signs and symptoms depends on the dose received, route and rate of absorption, balance between the stimulation of muscarinic and nicotinic receptors in the autonomic and skeletal muscles. Poisoning by inhalation causes most rapid onset of symptoms, whereas least absorption is through skin. The involuntary muscles and skeletal sorry, secretory glands are affected first, followed by voluntary muscles and at last the vital brain centers. In organophosphorus poisoning, their clinical features are divided into muscarinic, nicotinic and CNS manifestations. In muscarinic effects, there is increased postganglionic parasympathetic activities. The symptoms include sludge which is a mnemonic of increased salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, gastrointestinal symptoms and emesis. In respiratory system, there is increased secretion and bronchoconstriction. As a result, the outflow of the bronchotracheal tree is blocked which can lead to pulmonary edema. So how will be a patient in case of pulmonary edema? Yes, there is difficulty in breathing, right? So they will be having dyspnea and cyanosis. In secretory glands, patient will have excess sweating, lacrimation and salivation. When coming to cardiovascular system, there may be brady or tachyarrhythmias, conduction block and hypotension. In eye, there is meiosis and blurring of vision. The nicotinic symptoms are due to paralysis of postganglionic and somatic nerves. Therefore, their effects will be directly inverse to the muscarinic manifestations. There is a mnemonic called NIC gives tension, weakness and paralysis. Here, tension refers to hypertension, weakness means muscular weakness and muscular fasciculations which later on leads to paralysis. The CNS manifestations includes all exaggerated states like restlessness, tremor, anxiety, headache followed by a depressed state like drowsiness, slurred speech, ataxia, convulsion, coma and finally depression of respiratory and cardiovascular centers. In some cases, only muscarinic or CNS effects or nicotinic effects are seen but mostly there will be a combination of all the three. Isolated nicotinic effects are seen only in 10 to 20 percent of cases. When coming to the severity of the poisoning, they can be divided into mild, moderate and severe poisoning. In case of mild poisoning, where the cholinesterase activity is 20 to 50 percent of the normal, there will be nausea, malaise, fatigue, muscle weakness, cramping without diarrhea. If the patient is having moderate poisoning where the acetylcholinesterase level is 10 to 20 percent of the normal, there will be symptoms of sludge with or without tremors, weakness, muscular fasciculations, confusion, lethargy and anxiety. If there is severe poisoning, the cholinesterase activity will be less than 10 percent of the normal. There will be sludge and respiratory insufficiency, weakness, fasciculation, coma, paralysis, seizure and autonomic dysfunction. Intermediate syndrome. They are the group of symptoms which usually occurs 1 to 4 days after consumption of poison. They include muscle weakness and paralysis characterized by motor cranial nerve palsy, weakness of neck flexor and proximal limb muscles and acute respiratory paralysis. They are produced due to prolonged cholinesterase inhibition and muscle necrosis. They usually does not respond to oxim or atropin. The delayed sequelae also known as delayed peripheral neuropathy can occur 1 to 5 weeks after exposure to certain compounds like parathion, malathion and trichlorophan. It begins with paresthesia and cramps in the cough muscle followed by ataxia, weakness and toe drop. The deep tendon reflexes are diminished. The disease may even progress for 2 to 3 months and muscular wasting occurs. When coming to the fatal dose, it differs for each compound. For example, 
the fatal dose of TEPP is 50 mg injected intramuscularly or 100 mg consumed orally. The fatal dose of OMPA is 80 mg intramuscular or 175 mg orally. For parathion, it is 80 mg intramuscular or 175 mg orally. For HETP, it is 60 mg intramuscular or 350 mg orally. For malathion and diacinon, it is 1 gram orally. If the patient is not treated, death occurs within 24 hours. If the patient underwent treatment but it is not successful, death may occur within 10 days. In non-fatal cases, the acute effect starts in 6 to 30 hours and disappear in 2 to 3 days. Sometimes it may even persist for 2 weeks. If treated early, complete recovery occurs in 10 days. Now, why should we know this fatal dose, fatal period, all these things? Because as a clinician, it is very important for us to depict the course of the disease and to treat accordingly. Cause of death is due to either paralysis of respiratory muscle or respiratory arrest due to failure of respiratory sector or intense bronchoconstriction. In case of late death, it is mainly due to ventricular arrhythmias. The diagnosis of organophosphorus poisoning can be done by three methods. First method is estimation of RBC cholinesterase and plasma cholinesterase level. If the RBC cholinesterase level falls less than 50% of normal or if there is a mismatch between the plasma and RBC cholinesterase level. It is important to note that the plasma cholinesterase is a more sensitive indicator and they fall rapidly in acute poisoning. Second method is by estimation of the cholinesterase level at the motor end plate which can be done by histochemical analysis of the muscles. Third is confirmatory test by giving 2 mg of eye injection atropine intravenously. Now you are going to tell me the treatment of arachnophosphorus poisoning. Already we have discussed about the route of administration that is the source of poisoning, their mechanism of action and signs and symptoms. If you know all these things the treatment part becomes very easy. First of all, for all poisoning, we should remove the patient from the source of exposure. Next is washing the skin thoroughly with soap and water followed by ethanol and water or alkaline solution. If the eye is contaminated, irrigate it for 15 to 20 minutes. Maintain the airway. In case of difficulty in maintaining the airway, tracheostomy may be performed. Next, do stomach wash with 1 to 5000 potassium permanganate solution. Activated charcoal can be given at 1 gram per kg of body weight dose. Be careful, you should not induce vomiting. Also, avoid physostigmine, endorphin and succinylcholine. Atropine has a major role in case of organophosphorus poisoning. It arrests the muscarinic and CNS effects, but it has no effect on nicotinic actions. 2-4 to 4 mg of atropine should be given initially. Later, double the dose every 10 to 15 minutes until muscarinic symptoms are relieved. Atropine should be continued until tracheobronchial tree secretions are cleared, but not on pupillary status because some doctors will stop administering IV atropine once the pupils become dilated. It should not be done. There are other group of drugs called specific cholinesterase reactivators like diacetyl monoxim dam or 2-pyridine aldoxim methiodide 2 pam diacetyl monoxim crosses blood brain barrier has marked action at nicotinic sites and improves the mus muscle strength in 10 to 40 minutes it can be given as 1 to 2 gram iv as 5 percent solution over 5 minutes or diluted in 150 ml of normal saline over 30 minutes you should repeat the dose one hour later if muscle fasciculations are not relieved Later, you should repeat every 6 to 12 hours for first 24 to 48 hours. Be careful, the maximum dose should not exceed 12 gram in 24 hour period. Alternatively, 2.5 gram person solution as a continuous infusion at 0.5 gram per hour can be given. Oxums reactivate the inhibited cholinesterase, remove the block at neuromuscular junction and prevent formation of phosphorylated enzyme and directly detoxify organophosphates. They should be started as early as possible. Pralidoxim acts synergistically with atropine that is 
when pralidoxum is given, the dose of atropine required will be less. Other symptomatic measures like in case of convulsion, diazepam at a rate of 20 to 20 milligram IV followed by phenobarbital or phenytoin can be given. In case of status epilepticus not controlled with diazepam, general anesthesia can be given. For pulmonary edema and bronchospasm, oxygen supplementation, intubation, IV atropine and positive pressure ventilation will be the treatment of choice. Antibiotics should be given to prevent pulmonary infections. Last part of organophosphorus poisoning is the postmortem appearance. There will be signs of asphyxia, face is congested, there will be cyanosis of lips, fingers and nose. There will be blood stained froth at mouth and nose. When you open the body, you will feel a kerosene smell in the stomach contents and froth. The mucosa of stomach will be congested with submucous petechial hemorrhages. Respiratory passage will show congested and frothy hemorrhagic exudate. Lungs will have congestion, excessive edema and subdural petechiae. The heart will be soft and flabby, brain and meninges show congestion and edematous. The estimation of cholinesterase in RBC and at myoneutral junction is below normal. Organophosphates can also be detected in putrefied bodies. So far we have finished organophosphorus poisoning. The next group of agricultural poisons are carbamates. They are derivatives of carbonic acid. Among them, carbaryl, carbofuran, methonyl and propoxyr are highly toxic, whereas aldicarb, carbandazim and trialate are moderately toxic. They are available in the form of dust or solutions. Absorption is through inhalation, direct contact with skin or through ingestion. Their mechanism of action is similar to that of organophosphorus compounds that is they also inhibit carboxylic esterase enzymes by carbamylation. But they differ from organophosphorus poisoning in two things. First is they will spontaneously hydrolyze from the cholinergic enzymatic site within 24 to 48 hours. Therefore their symptoms will last only for 24 to 48 hours. Second is they do not penetrate into the CNS. Hence, CNS manifestations are absent in carbamate poisoning. Treatment When, when coming to the treatment part, atropine is the specific antidote. Pralidoxin may decrease the severity of symptoms and increase the respiratory function. Other treatment includes symptomatic measures. The next group of agricultural poisoning is organochlorin. They are chlorinated hydrocarbons and can be divided into four categories. DDT and analogs, benzene hexachloride, cyclodiene and related compounds, and toxophen and related compounds. Absorption is through skin, orally, or via inhalation. DDT is the least absorbed substance. They are partially metabolized in liver and directly excreted in the urine, feces, and milk. Indrin is rapidly metabolized and eliminated and does not persist in the body tissues. They interfere with the nerve impulse transmission. Central nervous system is first stimulated and then depressed. The fatal dose of DDT is 30 grams. Endrin belongs to the group of cyclodiene insecticides. It is also called as plant's penicillin because of its broad spectrum of activity against various insect pests. It is available in the brand names of Endrin V. 16, Endrin DB50, Entox EC20, etc. They are mixed with Aromax and hence possess kerosene like smell. The signs and symptoms begin within 1 hour to 6 hours. They include salivation, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, frothing at the mouth and nose, difficulty in breathing, restlessness, hyper irritability, midriasis, muscular incoordination mental confusion, tremors, seizure, and coma. The cause of death is due to respiratory paralysis. In non-fatal cases, most of the patient will recover within 24 hours. The fatal dose is 5 to 6 grams. By ingestion, it is 3 times as toxic as aldrin and 10 times as toxic as DDT. When coming to the postmortem appearance, there will be signs of asphyxia. The mouth and stomach content will have a kerosene-like smell. Endrin resists putrefaction and can be detected in the viscera even sometime after death. There is no specific antidote for 
endrin poisoning so only symptomatic treatment can be given like removing the patient from source of exposure washing the skin with soap and water gastric lavage with activated charcoal can be given cholestyramine can be given to increase the fat fecal excretion maintain airway breathing and circulation if the patient is having in an uh, altered mental state dextrose with naloxone and thymine can be given in case of seizure iv diazepam can be given followed by phenobarbital if not controlled general anesthesia may be preferred calcium gluconate is useful in some cases pyrethrin and its analog are commonly used as oils and lotion to kill head loss so it is one of the common accidental poisoning in children but it is less toxic because of its rapid metabolism the fatal dose is 1 gram per kilogram body weight patient may have symptoms of paresthesia vertigo muscle fasciculations rarely convulsion pulmonary edema and coma treatment includes washing the skin thoroughly with soap and water stomach wash atropin and oxim are contraindicated in case of severe allergic reaction injection adrenaline and antihistamine may be useful fluorides are commonly used as rat poison and cockroach powders here also children may accidentally consume these compounds and get poisoned these compounds react with the acid in the stomach and form hydrofluoric acid which is corrosive they also bind with calcium potassium and magnesium ions and cause hypocalcemia hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia the signs and symptoms includes burning pain in stomach increased thirst salivation hematemesis hematuria coma and convulsion death may occur within few minutes due to respiratory and cardiac failure the fatal dose is 5 mg per kg body weight treatment includes calcium which can be given either orally or intravenously and stomach wash with lime water or milk aluminum phosphide is used as pesticide rodenticide and insecticide they are widely used as grain preservatives in india it is available as white tablet of sulfos alfos quickfos etc each weighing 3 g which liberates 1 g of phosphine this aluminum phosphide when comes in contact with moisture it releases phosphine which is a systemic poison and affects all parts of the body this reaction is accelerated by hydrochloric acid in the stomach aluminum phosphide has a garlicky odor aluminum phosphide is absorbed by ingestion or inhalation it is metabolized in the liver and excreted in urine as hypophosphide it is also excreted in unchanged form through the lungs action of phosphine is inhibition of respiratory chain enzymes and the cytochrome oxidase enzyme the fatal dose is 0.5 g of 1 to 3 tablets inhalation of poison at a concentration of 400 to 600 parts per million is fatal within 1 hour the signs and symptoms depends on dose and severity of the poisoning in case of inhalation mild poisoning will have symptoms like irritation of mucous membrane acute respiratory distress chest heaviness etc in case of moderate poison there may be ataxia numbness paresthesia tremors diplopia jaundice muscular weakness and paralysis in case of severe poisoning patient will have respiratory distress syndrome cardiac arrhythmias congestive heart failure pulmonary edema convulsion and coma when ingested through gastrointestinal tract mild symptoms like vomiting headache abdominal pain will be present and patient usually recover moderate and severe poisoning are mostly fatal cardiovascular symptoms include hypotension shock arrhythmia myocarditis pericarditis acute congestive heart failure etc respiratory symptoms include difficulty in breathing cyanosis and pulmonary edema there may be jaundice hepatitis and renal failure too cns effects includes altered mental state acute hypoxic encephalopathy convulsion and coma the cause of death is usually due to cardiogenic shock complications are pericarditis acute congestive heart failure acute massive gastrointestinal bleeding and acute respiratory distress syndrome 
when coming to the postmortem appearance there may be garlicky odor from the mouth and stomach contents blood stained froth <coughs> mucous membrane of the lower esophagus stomach and duodenum are congested lungs liver spleen kidney and brains show congestion there may be centrizonal hemorrhagic necrosis of liver treatment includes gastric lavage with potassium permanganate solution activated charcoal antacid and liquid paraffin magnesium sulfate to be given at a dose of 1 gram for first 2 hours followed by 1 to 1.5 gram every 6 hourly for 5 to 7 days in case of shock iv fluids and inotropes like dopamine may be given injection hydrocortisone and oxygen supplementation may be needed the last topic of agricultural poisoning is zinc phosphide it is a steel gray crystalline powder with garlicky or fishy odor it is used as a rat poison and to preserve grains symptoms are similar to alp that means aluminium phosphate but slower in onset the cause of death is due to pulmonary edema and cardiovascular collapse fatal dose is 5 grams and treatment is symptomatic measures okay students so far we have covered everything about agricultural poisoning there are few more topics to be covered so subscribe to our channel to get instant notification on our new updates thank you